the files application for Windows. Nope, not the Windows File Explorer, which should associate with this icon, but rather the files application, which is a completely different app associated by this flashy icon here. So in this video, I'll show you how this app can replace the file explorer, some of the key features it provides, as well as things you should consider before switching to yourself, all as a comprehensive guide. So with that, let's begin. Chapters below, by the way. So a quick note on how to get this application before we begin, because there's a free method and then there's a paid way to get the exact same application. The paid method is via the Microsoft Store, which is one of the ways that you can support the developers. Yes, this is an open source application, but if you want to just try out for free, then go to the files website. I'll leave a link to this below the like button, where you can choose the classic installer as opposed to the Microsoft Store link or the insider preview. All right, after you download it, you can just run the exe file. And after a quick setup process, you'll be greeted with the following screen, which should look both familiar and different to the default file explorer at the same time. So now let's jump right into the key features of this application and where better to start than with the user interface. First is the modernized sidebar. This is similar to the file explorer in regards to the core options available, but it's a bit more friendly in regards to aspects like being able to collapse sections by clicking on a heading, as well as the ability to collapse a side panel completely if you like, by clicking this region and thus resulting in just the icons remaining. Talking of icons, next are the user interface icons. You can see these in the top section of the application. These are similar to the file explorer, but offer slight improvements to the way things are laid out. It's also the smaller details which you might appreciate, such as the animated checkboxes you get here, as opposed to the static ones you get in the default Windows File Explorer, as well as a nice animation that morphs your files when space becomes limited, like with the preview pane for example. But we'll talk about the preview pane a bit later on, because it too has some tricks up its sleeve. Following on from this is the improved view panel settings interface. A bit of a mouthful, but if you click this icon that you see here in the top right hand corner of the application, you'll get this control panel appear, showing you various viewing options. This is definitely far more intuitive to use, as opposed to the cluttered menus you'd traditionally find in the default file explorer. The key advantage I find with this menu style is the ability to quickly toggle things like showing file extensions and hidden items, while also being able to adjust the size of icons on the fly with the use of the slider, which has various icons along the length to let you know what you're selecting. And finally, regarding the UI side of things is the settings of this application. If you click the settings icon in the top right, you'll have a bunch of customization options available to you. For example, if you click the appearance tab, you can change the theme, the backdrop material used throughout the application, as well as the background color of the files application itself. Playing around with these, you can really change the files application to look the way you want with various transparency effects. I mean, you even have the option to apply a background image to your files windows if you'd like, rather than just having a solid color background. I think a minimal abstract type wallpaper would work quite well here. Oh, and slightly unrelated, but next to the settings icon in the files app, if there are any completed file transfers and notifications, they'll show up in this status center, which organizes events as they happen, which might be pretty useful in certain situations. Okay, so that covers the UI changes that you'll actually notice. Again, there are likely some smaller ones I've missed, but for now, let's take a deep dive into the core features of this application, as well as some of the key functional advantages that it offers compared to the traditional file explorer. The preview pane. The preview pane can be accessed by pressing this icon on the far right. Now, while you might think that there's nothing new here, and it's something that is also available on the normal file explorer, in the files application, it's actually far more advanced. For example, if you preview a PDF or any document in the default file explorer, you'll get a look at the first page, a couple of details, and that's about it. In the files application though, you get the normal details as you'd expect, but you also get this tab on the top of the preview pane, allowing you to load up a small preview of the PDF super quickly that you can actually scroll through as well, might I add. The best bit about this though, is that not only does this work on PDF documents, but also works on Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and probably a couple of other file types that I haven't really tested out. But yeah, you get the idea. It's almost like the preview pane becomes a mini portal into the respective application types you're referring to. And a final note about the preview pane is that it behaves sensibly too. So if you have a smaller sized window open, the preview pane will actually open on the bottom of the window instead of forcing it into some tiny section at the side of your window or just making it disappear completely, which is what the normal file explorer does. Split view. Another useful feature is the fact that you can put any tab into split view within the files application. To actually split a tab, be sure to press this icon that you can see in the top left of the application and then choose add pane, which you'll notice can either be horizontal or vertical depending on your preference. Once a tab is in split view, you can also change the size of the splits by dragging the divider between them. The pane that is active will also be slightly highlighted to indicate this and the preview window along with other more static elements of the UI will change accordingly as you switch between the panes. Though I will mention that you can only have a single split so you can't have more than two panes for each tab. I think this is reasonable as many more splits would just make things too cramped otherwise. Personally, I think this feature would be quite useful when performing lots of copying tasks between locations as this allows you to keep things organized with another level of hierarchy. 
blocky if you like compared to using tabs alone. Compact overlay. This feature can also be accessed from the top left hand corner menu that we touched upon previously and then by selecting the compact overlay option. This will allow you to shrink your files window into a tiny area on your screen, essentially providing you with a tiny portal into your documents and files on the fly without having to mess with all your other application windows that might already be organized and laid out as needed. Oh, and if you're wondering how I was able to set all my applications to these set positions with a click of a single mouse button, it was done with the help of the Power Toys app. So I'll leave a video in the cards above if you're interested in that. Miller Columns. Now you might be confused as to what exactly this is from the feature's proper name, but it's commonly referred to as the Columns view. This is such a nice feature that the Files application provides that is just not available in the standard Windows File Explorer. This viewing mode is great for navigating large file trees and is something that macOS has had for ages. Talking of which, I'll leave a video in the cards above on how to get some common macOS features on Windows via various free apps if you're interested. And finally, we have smooth scrolling. I was tempted to put this into the UI category, but I think it's probably more of a feature considering how nasty File Explorer is to use with a mouse. So let me explain what I mean. The Files application provides you with a smooth scrolling, which looks like this when you scroll with a mouse, as you can see, and like this when you scroll with a trackpad. Beautifully smooth and perfectly normal, you might think, and nothing special here, right? Well, that's what you'd think, but the moment you go back to the default File Explorer, you realize this feature isn't as granted as it seems. Now, it might just be me, but it's so annoying navigating long lists in the File Explorer where your content jumps in large notch intervals and you have to take a few seconds to recalibrate and figure out where you're looking at or whether you actually scrolled up or down because the content literally just teleports between different locations on your screen and you can't even argue that it was designed this way to keep your content in set places as opposed to being cut off halfway for example because on a trackpad you have this smooth scrolling ability albeit not with the best physics but yeah. Oh and on the topic of trackpads the files application allows you to swipe backwards and forwards to go backwards and forwards respectively. This is very similar to that which you find in the browser for example and it's just a nice quality of life feature. Honestly not having smooth scrolling or implementing trackpad gestures in the file explorer is just a joke in 2024. Not only this but on a trackpad in file explorer you literally have this weird glitch where if you scroll to the top or the bottom of a list of files file explorer literally freezes for a few seconds and then snaps to where it needs to be. It's almost as if the file explorer is unable to display a bounce animation or the point at which it reaches the end of the list and so instead it just jolts to the top. I mean I'm not being funny here but the original iPhone was able to do this and trust me people were going absolutely crazy seeing those physics back then. Okay so I think that covers some of the main benefits that you're likely to notice if you use the files application as your file browser of choice. However I think it's only fair if I discuss some of the downsides and things that you should generally be aware of if you decide to switch to this application. Firstly is the startup times. So the startup time for the files application can take a few seconds if you haven't loaded it in the background or as part of the Windows boot sequence. In my experience on a cold boot it can take up to 5 seconds to load up from the moment you press the icon. After this though, if you close files and then reopen it, it's as quick as any other application as it's already loaded in RAM at this point. But yeah, just something to keep in mind. And in a similar fashion, opening anything in files will take a split second longer than that of the default Windows File Explorer. Now I'm not referring to any massive lag spikes or anything like that, but maybe about 0.5 seconds here and there when navigating between different directories. I personally think that depending on the size of your folders, your viewing time can vary from being negligible to very noticeable. But coming from the default file explorer where everything is basically as fast as it was designed to be this could be an issue for many out there. I mean the devs are working on this and depending on how large most of your files and folders actually are your lag if you want to call it that will vary. Though I would have to say that the default file explorer itself also bugs down when opening large files so there is that to consider as well I guess. Performance hit. Now again this is similar to the last point I mentioned and is pretty much bound to happen on a third party file explorer replacement and that's the fact that the files application can be pretty hungry on your RAM and CPU usage. Now just opening the app and looking in the task manager, yes I know this is not the best way to measure things but we'll go with it. Overall the files application is far more hungry with the CPU usage, going as high as around 15% when browsing various files, while the file explorer hardly ever goes above the 5% range. In regards to the RAM, it's also a similar story with the files application being around the 250 megabyte mark when browsing files, while the file explorer sits around the 125 megabyte mark. So overall around double the system usage for the files application. And as you open more tabs and windows, this is likely to increase even more. This probably won't be too much of an issue if you have a decent spec computer, but for others, it might be more of an issue, so just thought to mention it. More prone to crashing. As with any other application that is being compared to that which was designed by Microsoft for its own operating system, expect some form of unreliability. Now, while I haven't faced any super big issues, there were times when the details tab, for example, in the preview pane just wouldn't load, but closing it and opening the application again fixed it. Again, your mileage may vary, but it is something that you should consider. Miss 
miscellaneous things. Another thing that can be often overlooked is the fact that many third party applications are built around the file explorer, such as when you save stuff from them and browse your files within the application itself through various viewers for example. Not to mention that while there is an option to replace the file explorer for the files app by making it the default choice in Windows, the fact that it has this warning from the developers themselves might indicate something. Are all the features worth it? Sure, the files application has a lot of little features and customization, but is it all worth it to permanently switch to? Like a lot of the menus, apart from the columns view, is basically doable in the file explorer, albeit through an older interface and maybe a few more instances of the app to make up for the fact that you don't have split tabs. Yeah, you don't get to change the color with the default file explorer or the theme of your folders, but is it worth the reliability trade-off? I think this is definitely a personal preference thing, but with this application trading your ability to get some cool features for reliability and performance, although file explorer is pretty basic, it is functional most of the time. I said most of the time. There's no doubt that the application will get better over time or even bought out by Microsoft at some point, but for now I'll stick with the file explorer. As for me, the extra features don't outweigh the cons currently, but I'll keep it installed and check on it from time to time, along with making use of the columns view and split tabs feature as and when needed, like for copying lots of files or for navigating large folder trees for example. But if you're looking for some more robust applications if you like, then be sure to check out this video which covers various free apps that add macOS features to Windows, or if that doesn't float your boat, then check out this video on a load of cool and useful websites. But anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.